Hi everybody, this is Gardner Raymond for Consequence Video Designs, back with another tutorial. It's been a little while, but I've been working on something that I thought was pretty fun, so I wanted to share it with people. Basically what we're doing is we're using Newton, which is a 2D physics simulation plugin for After Effects to help simulate real 3D motion inside of After Effects. Now we're also going to be using Element 3D from Video Copilot. Uh, this technique will work with flat 2D layers as well, uh, moving around in 3D space, but using Element really brings that 3D to life. So here's what I made the other day. Just trying to do a fancy, fancy faux credit card commercial here. So you can see it comes in, it bounces, has a little bit of rotation. You can see the reflection on here. Um, added a little lens flare in here to fancy it up a little bit more. We have a shadow. So I've only worked on this for a little bit, so we're just going to kind of jump in and, and I'm going to try to recreate this as accurately as I can for you. So here in After Effects, let's create a new composition, 1920, 1080, 30 frames a second, 1050 frames long. It doesn't need to be that long, but that's just kind of what I was working on in my project before, so that's what it'll be. Too long, doesn't matter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump right in and make the physics simulation. So what we need to do is set up a scene for Newton to create the physics. So what we need for this is just two simple shapes. We need a floor. We need something for the card to bounce off of. So we'll name this floor. And then we need something that's the relative shape of a credit card. So let's make it about that big. Whoops. I want to create that on a different layer. So we have two different layers here. Newton will split them apart if they ask you if uh, when you jump in. But and I'm going to change the color so we can see it better in Newton. So you have the card and the floor, and that's pretty much all it is. And what we're going to do here real quick is actually, you know what? I'll show you. I'll go through the whole process here. So now we have this set up. Uh, let's set the anchor points before we jump into Newton, because Newton uses the anchor points of your shapes or your masks. So you don't want the anchor point down here because the rotation is going to get thrown off uh, when it when it actually hits and bounces. The, the anchor point will end up being down here somewhere, and then it'll rotate around that, and it'll look weird. The actual center of gravity of this object, if it was dropping, would be here. So let's put the anchor point right here. The floor doesn't really matter because it's not going to move, but let's set it anyway. Floor. OK. So we go to Composition, Newton 2. Okay. So now the card and the floor. The floor, we want to make a static object because that's not going to go anywhere. And the card, we want to bounce off the floor. So let's just run the simulation and see what it looks like right now. All right, so it just bounces straight down. And that's because this whole object is weighted the same throughout. Uh, and since it starts flat, it just falls flat. There's no wind resistance to make it move or anything. So you get just kind of a basic bounce. We don't want to do that. We, we want to get it to bounce a little bit, uh, make it a little bit more realistic, like if you actually dropped a car on the ground. So before we leave, let's get rid of auto load save settings. That's on by default. I'm going to turn it off because sometimes when you make little changes to your original scene, uh, Newton doesn't refresh properly when you go back in. So if you turn off that setting, it'll refresh every time you go in. Most of the time you want to leave it on uh, so you can jump back and forth between this composition and your Newton project uh, to make changes as you need to as you're running the simulation. But in this particular case, I'm going to change the rotation by one degree so it doesn't fall straight down. So this end is going to hit before this end and it's going to give us a little bounce back and forth motion. So now that's changed, let's jump back in Newton. So now it's updated with this. I'm going to turn this back on. Okay. Now let's run the simulation. Whoops. Since it didn't auto load the settings, everything's back to default. So we need to set this back to static. If we had had this checked when we went back, when we came back into Newton, this would still have all, everything would still retain the same settings. 
So let's run it again. All right, now it doesn't really bounce very much. So let's change settings. Let's let that play so it refreshes every time we uh, change things. So let's change the bounciness. That looks pretty good. Let's turn it down a little bit. All right, maybe turn the density up. Friction up. With Newton, you're just going to want to play with these settings till you find something that looks good to you. Turn this down. All right, I like that little extra little bounce it has over here. Okay, so when you stop it there, we see that it took about 96 frames. So let's just render it out to 100 frames. Uh, we don't need to enable motion blur for this because we're only using these these bodies as placeholders. We're just using the data that we get from them. We're not using the actual data, so we don't need to worry about motion blur. You could have turned this on anyway. Apply it to a new composition. You should always apply something, uh, a render out from Newton to a new composition, uh, just so you don't mess up your original one, because you're always going to want to go back and, and tweak stuff later. All right, so we're done there. It creates a new one up here called Comp3. If I had named this properly, I would have named this uh, card drop for the tutorial. So this would be card drop tutorial Newton. So when we open this up, we can see all the keyframes that we have in here. Boom. So I've, how I first started working with this project is I just did it with a flat layer. I didn't start with element. So right in this tutorial, or Sorry, right in this tutorial, right in this composition, I created a new solid. I'll just call it card. And make a some kind of card stock color. Okay. And then created a little card. And I'd rather not have that. I'd rather have a rounded rectangle. So it looks like a card. Okay, Oops, don't need that. Uh, I'll turn that into a 3D object. We'll make a new camera. We'll just name this default camera. So we're gonna end up having at least two different cameras in this scene. Let's make it 35 millimeter. Uh, and I want a background. So in my assets folder, I have some textures here. Where are we? Let's use this one, it's not in the right folder. It's a video copilot grunge texture from Riot Gear. I don't know. It's a pretty old one. Uh, we'll turn this into a 3D space. Now what we need to do is turn the floor off because we don't need that at all anymore. We can go at the bottom. We could actually even delete it if we wanted to, but we'll just leave it there. So now we're going to hit U on the card shape. This would be new card so we don't get confused. Uh, it's a different color anyway, so that's red. So the blue one, the shape that simulated that motion, you see that drop is basically in the Y direction. But in order for it to fall down, we want this card to fall onto this background. We want it to be in the Z axis rather than the Y axis. So we're going to hit position here, and we're going to take the position values of the card object and paste them onto the position of the new card. So now this does the same thing. It just falls, right? Okay. So we need to use a little expression here, an easy one, to make the Y values be the Z values and the Y values not be affected. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple array, open bracket, pick whip X value, comma. So what this information right here means transform dot position, open bracket, zero, close bracket. All this means is this X value right here. 
comma. We're going to do select the Y value. And then we want this Y value to not be affected. Um, and in this particular case, I'm just going to zero it out. So to do that, we selected transform position one with the pick whip. And then we're just going to hit minus and select it again. So whatever this value is, it's going to subtract that value. So it's always going to equal zero. The Y value here, this bit here, means the Y value will always equal zero. And then comma for the Z value, we want the Y value. Close bracket, hit enter. Now, you can see it moving in the Z axis. Now you'll notice that the card's up here and it's not perfectly centered. You can deal with that and just move your camera around uh, to where it is and it'll be fine. Or you could create a command option shift Y, create a new null object, call this card controller. Uh, let's make it 3D just so we're okay. Pick whip to that. And now it's back centered again. So now the other thing this has is rotation. Right here you can see it's only rotating on the Z axis. This card shape is only rotating on the Z axis. We want this card to rotate on the X and Y axis. We want it to kind of bounce like the corners of the cards that are uh, hitting one another. So we can shift R to bring up the rotation. And we're going to take this rotation value, copy, paste it to the X rotation value. And then the Y rotation, we want to put a little bit of Y rotation in it as well. You see this move here. Let's change this to two views. This is right. Now as we go through, you can see the card. This is the card right here, this card. You see it hit, bounce, and now it has that little bit of rotation in it here that if we didn't have this, whoops, if we started here, didn't have that, it's just going to bounce. So we want the rotation in there. We want to give it a little bit of, of uh, Y rotation as well, just to give it a little bit more. Instead of copying and pasting this exact same data on here to give it a, a symmetrical look, what we're going to do is option click on Y, select the X rotation value, and then multiply it by 0.3. So for every one degree, this is only going to be 0.3. So now you can see it has a little bit more motion in there when it hits. Let's do a quick RAM preview of that. You can see how it actually kind of bounces a little bit more realistically. Now this shape we're done with, so we can turn that off also, and let's put it below here. Next step is we want the card to actually land on something and not just disappear through the background. So let's refer to this position. Our final Z position is 397.2. So let's change our Z position for this to 398. So it's right behind it. As we go in here, you can see that it's right behind it. All right, so let's switch back to one view. What else is going to make this more realistic? We want some shadows, right? So let's create a light. Layer new light. Light one, uh, spotlight, sure, 129, I want it a little bit, a little blue. Uh, we'll leave the shadow, darkness, and diffusion as they are right now. We can, we can decide later what we want that really to be. Hit OK. So now it gives a little bit of color tint to it. Uh, we're getting, and we should be getting shadows. Get some shadows there. We need to 
go to the material options of the new card, hit AA for the material options, change cast shadows to on. Now it's casting a shadow on there, on the background. Now let's check out that cool little angle I had. So let's create a new camera. We'll call this mm, comp camera, still 35 millimeter. And now let's orbit around and see what kind of angle we want to get. Now, a lot of times doing a camera move and moving it around, you want to use a, a null object, uh, parent your camera to a null object, but I'm just kind of checking some things out here. Uh, the move isn't going to be crazy as you saw in the original, uh, the original render. So I'm happy just moving the camera around itself. So there, now I see it here. So let's maybe comp camera. Let's do position rotation. And then by the end, let's rotate around. Like that. So how's that move going to look? All right, we want it to ease into that spot. So a quick RAM preview of this. So there's the basics of this technique right there. It's just kind of changing some key, uh, linking some keyframes up to different places, a little light in here, a little camera move, and it looks great. So you got this 2D layer and it, and it works fine. If you want to do this with a sheet of paper, um, you're not too worried about it. You want to do some flat letters, uh, it's, it's going to work fine. Or if you wanted to have letters or an object drop straight down from the, from the top, you know, it's, it's going to work uh, it's going to work out fine, but this isn't the point of this. We want to use some th real 3D objects and create some 3D dynamics here. So let's start doing that. Let's switch back to our default camera so we can see the front. Let's create a new solid. We're going to call it element. The comp size, we're going to make it black. We'll do composition. We will do effect. Sorry. We have copilot element. Now I should say I'm using element version one here. I haven't upgraded yet to element version two. You're going to get some drawbacks uh, using this technique with element one uh, that I think version two is going to solve. Uh, notably, a, a limited number of objects that you can have interact with one another. Uh, some reflections uh, and some shadows uh, that, that version 2 has and creates really well that version 1 doesn't. So if you only have version 1, this will still work. Uh, and if you have version 2, then it's going to be a little bit easier. You're not going to have to worry about the shadow from this object, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's, on, uh, let's take our new card, let's get a mat, check the mask out here, copy the mask. Mm, let's not even do that. Let's go to element, let's go to custom layers, custom text and masks. Let's select new card. That will use the mask from the new card layer to create the extruded shape in element. Go to scene setup, hit extrude. And there's our card. Same shape as the mask that we had before. It's a little thicker than it needs to be, but let's, so let's thin it out to credit card thickness. And actually, I found you want it a little bit because that's probably credit card thickness right there. But you actually want it a little bit thicker in this scene. But that's just something I found out from playing with this. So whatever you're doing, you're just going to have to go back and tweak it. So now we need the card texture. I have the card texture already set up. Let's just hit OK to get out of this for right now so we have the that object. Um, over here, I have the card texture uh, right here, right there. 
what I decided to do was pre-comp it. So we'll do this. We'll create a new one. We'll do black ink card, pre-comp it. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's mask it because I didn't mask it earlier in Photoshop when I should have. There we go, so now there's that. And let's see, we will scale it up just slightly. Whoops. One, uh, let's see, one, one. All right, let's fill that up. And then really, since this is just a blank card template, we can make it say whatever we want. I had it say black ink before, but This is the awesome card. Make it smaller. We're going to choose a line to center it. I'd like it about 80% height there. I'd like my spacing to be out a little bit more. I'd like this to be a little smaller. And I'd like to move it up. So there's the awesome card. You can also put in some numbers here. I have uh, found a free font online called Credit Card. So let's just do 3707-66890. Enter. When you've been a member since, it's a badge of honor. And it would all be caps, of course. And then these, these are going to be credit card. I have credit block, credit card. There we go. 100. Center it. This guy a little smaller. Samuel Smith. Perfect. So there's our card. We can call this black ink card. Texture map. We go back to this one. We're going to drop the texture map in here. We don't need to see it. We go to elements, custom layers, custom texture maps, black ink card texture map. Go back into scene setup. On extrusion model one, our card, set our diffuse layer. Texture map. And you just have to tweak this a little bit. So it looks right. There we go. Okay, so there's our card. Let's add a little bit of reflection to it. Let's do 25%, maybe a bit lower than that. So it looks like it actually is plastic or some kind of fancy metal that this card I'm sure would be made out of. Uh, hit OK. So there's our card. This is in group one, part rec particle replicator. Particle look. And render settings. Oops, where are we? World transformation is what we want here. 
So we're going to take this information from the card, U, and we're going to link all the world transform data element world transform hit the tilde key to maximize whatever screen you're hovering over just if you didn't know what I did there there's the tilde key world transform world rotation so you're gonna need position XYZ and rotation new card here position let's go back to the front here we're gonna copy that we're going to paste that and since this has X Y and Z separate you're just gonna get the X Y coordinates here X Y X Y It's weird that it's at 14. There we go. And then the X value, let's just control click, option click, sorry, pick whip to that value. There you go. Same with the rotation, let's just pick whip, X rotation world, X rotation. Y rotation world, Y rotation. There we go. Tilde key again, we're back here. Let's, since we're not using this card here right now, we're going to hit AA for material options. Uh, we're just gonna turn it off for right now. How about that? Now let's turn it on because we need to reset our position of our 3D card here. So we're going to position X, Y, position X, Y. We're going to scale it up to match the approximate size and position of the card that we had. Now we turn that car off. Now we have our 3D object with reflections moving in 3D space with what looks like accurate dynamics. Uh, it, it, it is accurate dynamics. Um, so let's change this to our comp camera here. Now we can see our card. Let's do a quick RAM preview. So there's your basic motion. Now we're missing our shadow because this background is not a part of the element scene. This 3D object, even though it's a 3D layer in here, the 3D objects and element won't interact with other 3D elements in the scene. Um, so we need to fake the shadow a little bit. Like I, uh, like I said earlier, with version two of Element, it should be able to, uh, you should be able to incorporate this background into it, get an accurate shadow on it, get uh, some accurate reflections. I tried doing it with this before, uh, putting this background in a separate layer and it just wasn't working out as well as using this technique right here that I'm going to show you. So we'll turn this card back on. And now we have material options open. And we don't want to see the card, but we want to use the shadow it creates. So we'll change cast shadows to only. So now you can see the shadow that's showing up from that. If we turn off this new card, there's no shadow. Shadow, no shadow, shadow, no shadow. Deselect that. I turned it off. There it is. There you go. Shadow, card, dynamics. Looks awesome, right? 
it is the awesome card after all. Let's do something else. We can play with this a little bit more too. Let's go into element. Let's close that up. Let's go to our render settings and let's go to our lighting. You can use comp lights. You can turn them off. We can add additional lighting. They have all these other lighting options. So I could turn this off if I didn't want to use the comp light. I could add additional lighting here. And then what we can do is we go into additional lighting. We can boost the brightness if we want. We can also change the rotation, which is really where you're going to see the effect happen. As you rotate it around, it's like the lights in the scene are actually rotating around your object. This is, is what you're doing here. So because these different stylized, uh, this stylized light has different color lights in it, you see it has an orange light, and as you rotate it back around, it has a cooler blue light. So you can kind of get some different looks that way, like you want your car, you want this card to be really fancy, right? So it's got to be gold. So let's move that around. Instead of changing those, the colors on the original card, we can just use some of the lighting in here, and we can use the rotation here. Let's go back here. And that's also going to help with your reflections later. Let's use comp lights. I like the comp lights as well. In this particular instance, we we'll take this brightness down a little bit. Um, maybe cinema. And really, it's just going to be playing around with it till you get a look that you like. It's golder a little bit. So you're getting some reflections as the card bounces from the, the lights that are in the scene. Darker, brighter. And then to really fancy it up, let's select the comp camera, hit AA for camera options. Turn on the depth of field. Uh, let's boost the aperture way up so we can start to really see it. Change the focus distance because this card's a lot closer. And you can see as you go through, you can see the focus plane going across the card. So there we go. Now we have a little bit more. If we want it to really be out, let's uh, really out of focus here and really just focused on the center of this card. We can boost that blur amount way up. That's a little much. But then we knock the aperture down. This makes uh, a little less shallow depth of field there. So we can get most of the card in focus, but everything else falls off real quick. So you can see here, you're going to be totally out of focus. We got some of the background in focus here. Let's see, go back here. See, we got some background layer in focus as this is falling into focus. Now, here's the other thing. We, we can always add some extra things here to make this look even more realistic. Let's turn on motion blur. Now. Let's turn the motion blur on. Let's turn the depth of field off because the depth of field always takes longer to render. So we can let that play through there. And now that I'm looking at this, I don't like this second little bounce that, that this has. Like it kind of, it bounces, but then it just kind of settles right down in there. So that's what I mean by you want to create this original Newton composition uh, when you render it out, put it in a new composition. Because now, if I decided I don't like this motion here, I can go back into Newton. I can change some settings, change a bounce and the friction and all and the settings on that. And you can change a bounce and friction settings on the floor as well uh, that will affect this. And then once you get something you like, render it out, take the keyframes, and just swap them out. Let's make another little stylized layer. Uh, let's do some optical flares here. Because, you know, what what project is complete without copious use of Video Copilot products, right? We can't create anything without Andrew Kramer. Options, let's, uh, I don't know. What do you got? Doesn't really matter. You gonna work for me here, bud? All right, thanks. Mm. 
I don't know. Sure, why not? We're going to want to turn off some of these things. Hide that. Oops. Uh, hide that. Get rid of some of these multi irises. Okay, like that. We will change the mode to add. We'll move this over here because we just want a little bit of. We just want a little bit of love from that. We don't. We don't want a crazy flare in the middle of our. In the middle of our shot. You can see how that just adds a little bit of extra color over here too. If we turn it off just adds a little bit of extra to the scene if we kept some of those if we go into optical flares again and we um, you know we turn some of these irises back on whoops so you're gonna get some of that you're gonna get that iris in there um, and if we make this a 3D light, this iris is actually gonna move with the camera move. And then let's maybe, let's put optical flares on top and see the difference layer order makes here. And put it on top. I like to look at that better. Uh, let's add a new adjustment layer and just add some curves. Curves. That, add a little bit of that. Um, and then maybe some. Desaturation a little bit, a little bit, and we're gonna add a mask on that. Subtract it, feather it, whole bunch. There we go. Uh, maybe knock the opacity down to 80, so you can see the difference this makes. This focuses your eye a little bit more. Um, and then a final little effect that's nice to use that I just learned. I mean, I knew about it, but I didn't really consider it until I was watching a Grayscale Gorilla tutorial a little while ago. Uh, add grain. Now, as Nick explained it on Grayscale Gorilla, and it makes sense, this Adding grain, it simulates film grain from a real film camera. Uh, as you can see, you go to presets, they have all these uh, film stock presets as to you know, what they look like. Let's do uh, Vision 500, and you can see in this preview area what it looks like. Um, change the preview area a little bit so you can see what that's gonna look like. And what this grain does is, since it's gonna be on top of everything, it's the last thing you put on, it kind of smooths out the whole image and it gives a better feeling that all this, all that you're seeing was shot through one camera in a real place and that these things really exist together. So this is a little crazy. Um, I, I think the default is always a little crazy no matter what you pick up here. Um, that's a little bit. That's actually pretty good. So if you go to final output. Now, I don't know how easy it's going to be see on a compressed web version, but you can definitely tell when you turn it on and off, especially uh, kind of look in the in the darks. You can see the difference a lot more. Maybe if you want, knock the intensity down a little bit, maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And that's going to make the grain size a lot smaller, uh, so it's not right in your face, but it's still going to make enough of a difference that your brain's going to recognize it. 
and it's gonna it's gonna smooth everything out for you. So we can do a quick RAM preview of this. It's not gonna be quick. Uh, the add grain feature only added on at the very end because it increases your render time tremendously. Um, so you don't need to do RAM previews with it. You don't need to just put it on, make sure it looks good uh, before your final render and then render it out with your final, with your final render. Um, curves, saturation. Um, but for the sake of this, I'm gonna turn it on and do a RAM preview. Don't worry, I'll skip the uh, rendering part. So here's the render. Um, and, and now that it renders through and you see everything moving, I really don't like these extra lens elements that are coming through from the flare. So I'm probably gonna go in and turn those off. But this has grain on it, this has motion blur, this has depth of field, this has uh, an adjustment layer. So this is pretty much what the final shot is gonna look like. And this effect doesn't only work with uh, drop, uh, you know, with this angle. I, I, I did a couple other ones really quick that were not, um, that are not super fancy. Uh, where are we? What have I done with them? Um, got this one. So you can see this is just a dropped ball that's uh, on, a, on a pivot. This is just a cheesy looking line that's in here. It'll look a lot better with it, you know, with something that was actually in there. But this, you can see there's a real 3D shape that was created an element. It's rotating. And then I took the data that I got from a, uh, from this here. Where's my shape? I turned my shape on and I turned element off. You can see it was just a ball shape that I dropped. And then took the data and, and applied it element uh, and in this case the XY data works fine you don't need to use that expression to put it on the z-axis since it's just hanging down here um, and then if uh, you know if you wanted to rotate around this object you can rotate around it you can you know whatever you whatever you want with the with the camera um, please excuse the poor quality of these but uh, you know it is what it is and then uh, let's see, we got this one here. So there you go, it's like a battering ram coming through, knocking, uh, knocking these letters out of the way. This is where earlier when I was saying you're gonna run into some, some issues with, with element version one is that these all have to be in their own separate group. Let's see if I go to element here for this one. They're all in different groups. Group three, group four. Uh, let's go to my scene setup here real quick. These are all in different groups, each letter. So I could take the data from, yes, uh, from my letters, which I apparently have deleted. Or drop comp uh, two, maybe. There we go. Uh, this was basically L-E-T-T-E-R-S, turn that off. Um, this was the composition in the, in the first place. So this background's terrible. Uh, I just set these letters up, they're individual shapes, so you can do masks. So um, the anchor point is set to where it needs to be for each one. Uh, by default, it ends up getting set in the center of the comp. So if you did that, all the rotation again, values are gonna be from the center of the comp when you use Newton. Um, so I try to do this first with letters, but the word letters and the letters and the word letters, but there's too many. If you want individual motion for each one, you need them to be on, on separate groups. So then you apply the data to each, to each, uh, particle position here. So if you have more than five objects, you can't get them to move independently of one another. So you, you kind of run into that that issue. If you if you wanted to have more objects and have them all falling or whatever, you can add more instances of element, 
but only the ones, only the objects that are in each specific instance of the element effect are going to be able to interact with one another. So you could have these five letters here in one group and then the R and the S in the second group, but when these go flying through this way, they're not going to interact with the R and the S. They're just, L-E-T-T-E is just going to keep going through there and R and S are going to react independently. Uh, with version 2, I believe you can add many, many more objects because he has subgroups and subfolders and, and, and all kinds of crazy stuff that you can do in there. So I think it'll be a lot easier. But for right now, you're kind of stuck with uh, 5 is the limit, which is why in this version, you see I still have my original shape that I used uh, as the battering ram rather than an actual 3D object that I could have created. Um, but anyway, there's there's going to be tons of options to use this. So if you want to get some... 3D dynamics uh, in After Effects without using Cinema. Um, you know, you have Cinema 4D Lite that they came with uh, CC, that's shipping with CC now, but it doesn't have the dynamics option in there. You need to get the, uh, the studio, or I think, yeah, I believe you need to get the studio version, which is a, a, a pretty good investment. Um, so this is, a, this is a pretty good option if, if you don't have it. One of the other drawbacks too is you're only going to get uh, 3D motion in two planes, and in this example, it's the X Y axis. Um, you're not since Newton only only figures out X Y coordinates and not Z coordinates. You can move the X and Y coordinates to a Z coordinate, but you can you're not going to get accurate interaction like in all three dimensions. Like if you dropped a dropped a glass, you know, if you dropped a glass on a hard ground, it's going to shatter in all, you know, in all three dimensions. Um, and you're not going to be able to get that kind of motion with, with this effect, but uh, it, it's going to work pretty good, especially for, you know, some something like this. Um, and one other thing that I did too, real quick, I know I'm getting long here, is uh, in my original comp 3D, uh, I put the numbers and the card on in different groups. So we go to my scene setup here. Let's see, I have the numbers here created independently of the card. So it looks a little bit more realistic. I mean, at, the, at this angle, it doesn't, you can, you can see it. You can see that it's actually, you know, embossed, quote unquote, on the card rather than, you know, what we did over here, which is just flat. So definitely consider that option if you want to spend a little bit more time. Uh, with version one of Element, you're going to have to reposition some things a little bit. With version two, he has a whole worldview system together, so uh, mask and text sizes stay the same as, as you created them, so it's going to be a lot easier setting that up too. Um, and then for the bigger reason that I did that would be for one of these close-up shots. If you want to do a close-up shot of the card falling before it actually bounces, You know, like here, you're going to want these numbers to actually be embossed and raised up a little bit more because, you know, you can see them better. If, if we zoomed in on this card here, you're going to see that it's flat on the card. And maybe that's the look you're going for. Um, but uh, I, I, I liked having them embossed a little bit more. And then this is just the 2D optical flare effect that I just uh, motion tracked along here. There you go. So there's the effect. I hope you liked it. I hope it, it helps you out in future projects. Um, I'm gonna make this project file available online shortly so you can download it, play with it. Uh, um, it's, you know, the 3D is only gonna work if you have Element installed. Um, the flares are only gonna work if you have optical flares installed. But you'll be able. But since Newton creates keyframes after it renders it out, all the keyframes that are created in here will be here, and the motion is going to be accurate. So you can still do it with, you know, with uh, one of these guys. You know, with one of your flat layers, if you want it. If you want it. So once again, I'm Gardner Raymond for Consequence Video Designs. Um, 
I'd like to see what you guys create with this, so please leave comments. Have a nice day.